So, President Bush, uh, let me start by asking you about a famous quote that you uh, made years ago when you were president. You said you saw Mr. Putin, you looked into his soul, and you yeah. didn't seem that concerned. What were you talking about at the time, and are you more concerned about his soul now? <laughs> uh, so, uh, Dave, this was in Slovenia, and uh, at uh, one of Tito's summer houses, early in 2001, and uh, Vladimir Putin and I met for the first time. And we sat down. Uh, first of all, I, I dismissed all the delegation. It was just me, Condi, Putin's Condi, and two interpreters. And I wanted to get to know the guy. You know, I, I think the best kind of diplomacy is personal diplomacy. And so he wants to talk about this, that, or the old Soviet era debt. And he had a huge stack of cards and kind of reading them. And it, it, it frankly, uh, it interested me, but I wasn't that interested in a huge stack of cards. And uh, I said to him, I said, uh, is it true your mother gave you a cross you, you had blessed in Jerusalem? This was a fact that the CIA had dropped on him as part of a background. And his whole countenance changed. He went from tense to relaxed and started talking about his uh, mother and the cross and what it meant to him, that it had been rescued. And I asked him about his daughters. He's got, he and Ludmilla had two daughters, and he was talking about their interests. And I told him about our daughters. And so he established a really good rapport. And we began a working relationship. And so it, this, but this comment came at a press conference. Uh, the question was asked by an AP reporter. Do you trust Putin? Now, keep in mind, I'm kind of trying to get a relationship, personal relationship with him. And if the answer was no, I don't trust him, it would have been hard to have a personal relationship. Uh, but uh, trust but verify had already been used by Ronald Reagan, and I didn't want to be viewed as a plagiarist. Right. And so I said, yes, and kind of hoped the reporter moved on. I said, why? And I said, because I looked in his eyes and saw his soul. And I, it was such a befuddling answer, they went on to another question. But uh, it was really referring to the fact that he had this great uh, kind of emotions about something as significant as the cross. And uh, had I looked in his eyes at the end of my presidency, I would have seen a different soul. Uh, in my judgment, it darkened up. He became uh, infected with power and uh, money and, you know, perhaps sex. Uh, and uh, he was a different guy. So... All right, in light of what you saw during the whole of your presidency, are you surprised that he decided to try to invade Ukraine? I'm not surprised that he would view weakness uh, as an opportunity to reestablish uh, a Russian empire. And I think he saw weakness, frankly, as a result of U.S. and allied reaction in Afghanistan. We needlessly pulled out. And the world goes, what the hell is America all about? You know, is it not willing to honor its commitment to girls and women, for example? And I think Putin saw that as an opportunity, as did, by the way, uh, Chinese and Iranians and everybody else who is not on the same side of freedom as we are. And uh, I, so he's got a chip on his shoulder. So um, you got to ask why. I mean, I, I just discovered it. Uh, when I introduced him to my little dog, Barney, who's a Scottish Terrier, and uh, he kind of dissed him, you know, like, you can't call that thing a dog. Anyway, uh, a year later, Laura and I go visit him in, outside of Moscow, and he said, you want to meet my dog? I had forgotten about the Barney diss, of course. And I said, yeah, and outbound's a huge Russian hound. And he looks at me and goes, bigger, stronger, and faster than Barney. I tell this Canadian prime minister, and he goes, at least he only showed you his dog. Well, yeah. Anyway, so, so it's a... So, you gotta, so here's the thing. It was, an, it was I think, uh, an interesting insight because it says, you know, I've got a chip on my shoulder. And so you got to ask why. And in his mind, the demise of the Soviet uh, was a terrible moment for the Russian people. And what you're watching him is try to reinstate Russian glory. Not necessarily in the, you know... The communist mode, but in the empire mode. So you visited Ukraine when you were president? Yeah, I did. And your impression then was it was a, operating okay as an independent country? Yeah, I mean, as far as, you know, like when you're the president, they put you on the Kutch tour. You know, you're not, you don't, 
So, yes, I, I went to the war graves of the people slaughtered by the Soviets, and uh, I met the young leaders, uh, opposition as well as those in power. Uh, it seemed to me there was a vibrant democracy going on, but I'm uh, also aware that young democracies take time, and it takes the support of older democracies to give them a chance to develop the civil society necessary to be, be, be peaceful. Now, during your presidency, there was a suggestion that maybe at some point Ukraine could become a member of NATO. Yeah, more than a suggestion. This was in Bucharest, and I, I, I called our allies together and said, let's provide a membership application process to Ukraine and Georgia, with the idea being that in order to get into NATO, there has to have the habits of democracy, the sustained habits of democracy. And I thought that that would be an interesting way to lock in some of the reforms that these countries had put in place. It wasn't provocative against anybody. It was really a way of cementing alliances with important young democracies. And, uh, and it was fought bitterly, primarily by Germany and France. Uh, you know, we, we were heroes with the Poles and the Lithuanians and the Latvians and the Estonians, these young democracies that knew the importance of NATO in their lives. And they wanted to see that it extended to Ukraine and Georgia. But now it got, it got uh, Angela Merkel put her foot down pretty hard. So some people would say that the idea that uh, Ukraine might become a member of NATO is what propelled Putin forward in this invasion. Yeah, they hadn't looked in his eyes and seen his soul, you know. Uh, he, 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 this is an empire builder. It has nothing to do, it's a convenient excuse for uh, uh, Putin's people and, uh, and critics of U.S. policy. Uh, no, this was not provocative. He, he, he told me that his dog was bigger than my dog way before uh, the opportunity to get into NATO. And I say that seriously, that this, this has been on his mind, the, the fact that he... Uh, uh, was part of a diminished power, and he wanted to uh, reinstate Russian glory. And so I, I find that, I don't think that's anything close to the truth.